at Homeboys is we look at people and we see people as if it's the very first time they've ever been seen and we behold them. Every homie that walks through the door is looking for a new beginning. You're not your job. You're not the worst thing you've ever done. We believe at Homeboys that the pathway to healing is through the relationship. We're here as both teacher and students, just walking with each other. You see somebody that looks like you. You see somebody that's been like you. And just being able to finally have a release, you know? We're one, we're a community. And it makes you feel like I'm not alone. Please welcome your host for the evening, the beloved legendary stars of Grace and Frankie, Emmy and Tony winner Lily Tomlin, and Emmy and Oscar winner Jane Fonda. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lily, Lily, what on earth are you doing wearing a face shield and gloves? No, look, the pandemic is not over, Jane. Well, I know the pandemic's not over. Why do you think this whole evening is going to be virtual? But we're sitting six feet apart. We've both been tested. Yes. We've both had our vaccination twice. Yes. I think you're safe with me. Come on. Okay, okay. then I, I won't be needing this either. Okay. Uh. Oh, my God. Oh, no, this is Dr. Fauci endorses the use of some oh, well. hand sanitizer. And I, I don't want it to oh. ruin my manicure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 Low Maximo Awards benefiting Homeboy Industries, the largest gang rehabilitation and reentry program in the world, and celebrating the organization's 33rd year. And Lily, I'm so glad to be co-hosting with you again <laughs> this year. Well, I am, I am thrilled to be here. That's for sure. I got such a kick out of co-hosting the gala with you in 2019 in a ballroom with a huge live audience. And I was so looking forward to repeating that last year. But then COVID-19 hit and lockdown thwarted those plans. Yeah, and I really hope next year we can all be together in a beautiful venue to celebrate the community and kinship that have been at the heart of Homeboy since Father Greg founded the nonprofit over three decades ago. But for now, here we are at Homeboy Industry, our headquarters in downtown Los Angeles, and I'm so thankful to everyone out there who's joining us virtually tonight. Just think about it as the best Zoom meeting ever, only with the, the thousands of like-minded, generous friends. Now, Jane, I know you don't go all the way back to the organization's inception, but you have been a fan of Homeboy for many, many years. Yes, that's right. Well, I first heard about the organization when Father Boyle opened Homeboy Bakery 30-some years ago in Boyle Heights, and then... I heard about how they expanded to include these amazing wraparound services. And I, I just several years ago wanted to join the board because I wanted to, to be up close and personal, really feel and see the transformation that they, that they are causing. And I wanted to be able to really help them expand from inside, you know. Um, can, I, can I brag on them for just, Please just a second? Please be my guest. Okay. So as we all know, 2020 was a terrible year for everyone, including hard hit nonprofits. But despite that, Homeboy really stepped up at the height of COVID when homeless people were starving and people were being released from prison with, with no clothes, with no money or shelter. Homeboy provided 5,000 meals every day to food and secure seniors, homeless youth, group homes. Father G and his team don't just change lives, they save lives. You know, I think what I admire the most is that it symbolizes such hopefulness. As opposed to hopelessness. Yeah, exactly. Love and hope, two things that are sorely needed on this planet right now. Homeboy reaches out to men, women, and youth, and all those who've been marginalized by society, you know, thrown away, just forgotten. It invests in people, it discovers their strengths and the best of who they are because none of us should be defined by the worst thing we've ever done. And as we'll see tonight, Homeboy has become a beacon for others around the world who see the organization as a true leader in whose 
footsteps they can and should follow. If everyone believed in second chances the way Father G, the entire staff, and you and your fellow board members do, we could literally change the world. I know I became a convert the minute you told me about all this truly miraculous work. Yeah, and I got you to work with me in the bakery. I know. I was Remember that? We that made croissant. Croissant, really. We did indeed. That was really good. I mean, how can you be human and not believe in Homeboy? The organization has accomplished so much. There's so much more to be done, though. Our goal, listen to this. Yes. Our goal is to actually double the number of people we serve and heal. Double. Of course, this ambitious expansion is going to cost money. And that's why tonight we're holding out hope for 100% participation from our viewers out there. Every gift counts, no matter its size, and every gift will be doubled thanks to the Johnny Carson Foundation, which tonight is generously matching every contribution penny for penny up to $200,000. I, I always love Johnny Carson. Yeah. There are two easy ways to make your gift or pledge tonight. Text LOMAX, LOMAX, to 76278. I'm going to say it again, 76278, to get a link to give on your cell phone right now. Or email your pledge to LOMAX at homeboyindustries.org along with your name, email, and phone number, and we will follow up with you. Remember, ten, one hundred, or a thousand dollars turns into twenty, two hundred, or two thousand dollars thanks to the Johnny Carson Foundation's matching challenge. Hey, how about to start things off with a bang? And since you're not going to be needing this face mask, let's sign it and and autograph it and and. And the person who gives the first $1,000 gets it. What do you think? That's a totally great idea, and I don't know why I didn't think of it. Well, you've got to be fast on your feet, kiddo, even if we are in our 80s. Yeah, well, how's that for fast on my feet? When I suggest that we sign this homeboy's mask. That a girl. And give it to the second person who donates a nifty grand. Now you're talking. Okay. Anyone need a pair of rubber gloves and some Purell? While we, we have do, it on eBay. <laughs> While we do our thing, let's get the show on the road and meet a few homeboys and homegirls who are going to lead us in a convocation. Please welcome Ruthie Garcia, Chris Miller, Celia Perez, and Primitivo Tapia. My name is Christopher Miller. My name is Ruthie Garcia. My name is Celia Perez. My name is Primitivo Tapia. I was always curious about Homeboy Industries and deep down wanted to know what programs they provided. I'm finding my purpose here at Homeboys. Homeboys have given me hope and a reason to believe in other people. I'm building myself up, my character, my skills, and I feel supported in it all from my peers and everyone at Homeboy Industries. I have found my purpose at Homeboy Industries. It just happened 30 years later than I thought. I came out as a transgender woman and found my voice as an advocate for transgender rights in the prison system. Homeboys have turned me into a person that I didn't know existed. Now I'm filled with the desire to help, to trust, to surrender. Now I'm here and I can see this was the best decision I ever made for me and my family. Bow your heads and let us pray. Loving God, thank you for another day. Guide us and show us the way. Help us find opportunity and favor and the people we are destined to become. Bless our work at Homeboy Industries and help us to be like you as we walk through life. Look into our hearts and see our love is pure for you. We pray for wisdom, for knowledge, the strength to forgive. Give us courage when we are afraid. We need the strength to carry on through these difficult times. Compassionate God, thank you for allowing me to change, giving me the strength to do so, and for blessing us all with Homeboy Industries. We are so grateful to you for showing us that all things are possible if we have faith. 
You've shown us that we are all your children, no exceptions. You have given us purpose and have helped us to find it. We're grateful that you put Homeboy Industries in our path. You know that we need its help. We ask all of these prayers in your name. Amen. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you a credible individual who's our longtime chief executive officer. For those who don't know, he has started as a part-time volunteer, and then G said, I just had to make him full-time. But after more than 10 years, he's still a volunteer who refused to take a paycheck. How's that for putting your money where your heart is? Please welcome our beloved CEO and the author of the soon-to-be-published book, Breaking the Rules, The Homeboy Way, Tom Vozo. Good evening. Welcome to our 2021 La Maxima Awards Ceremony. It's good to be back with you to share the news of Homeboy and to celebrate the amazing people who really made a difference for our community. We have a philosophy at Homeboy that we seek to expand the circle of compassion for our community, and during this past year, that certainly happened. Many more people now understand how food insecurity, homelessness, and unemployment exacerbates addiction, violence, and despair. And so a large number of people now understand that no one is defined by the worst thing they've ever done nor by the terribleness of their current circumstances. We at Homeboy are thankful for this greater awareness and for the generous support for our mission. Knowing that the pandemic has affected many nonprofits profoundly, folks have asked me, how is Homeboy doing? My answer is it's been a yin-yang of dueling narratives. On the one hand, we are joyous. Our donors have never been more big-hearted and supportive, which has enabled us to accomplish so much and help a great many. And I'd like to tell you about a few of these accomplishments. Like most, we initially shut down all operations, both our businesses and our programs. Our team scrambled to remain connected to our trainees. Phone check-ins led to Zoom check-ins, which led to the creation of an entire set of curriculums for online learning. Through everyone's hard work and your generosity, we did not lay off a single individual. With so much of our staff being former clients, who come from marginalized communities, that meant the world to them and to us. Within those first few weeks, the whole country started to see firsthand how many people are without reliable food sources. The women of the Homegirl Cafe approached us with an idea. What if they came to work, cooked up food in our storerooms, and served meals to those in our community who were hungry and struggling? From this simple, kind-hearted idea came a movement. Board members raised money so we could keep feeding our community's neediest. From there, we secured a few county and city contracts to do the same. And within a few short months, we scaled up a production to have 10,000 meals a week with our trainees making those deliveries. Many of our teammates have said how good and worthy helping others made them feel. That is what our social enterprise is all about. Positive activity, becoming part of something larger than yourself, being on a team and making a difference. It soon became very clear that we all needed to open our doors back to our clients. A safer home order doesn't work if you don't have a safe home or if you're trying to escape the neighborhood you live in. So our team quickly jumped into action to make sure we remain the safe haven we've always been for our people. By early May, our program leadership team had reopened Homeboy in a manner to keep Father Greg, all the trainees, and our staff safe. Masking, distancing, and hand washing ruled. Embraces were replaced with air hugs or fist bumps. Hanging out was replaced with purposeful activities such as keeping the building extremely clean, delivering meals, and running a Friday food bank. For the past seven months, a mobile COVID testing clinic has come to Homeboy once a week. And just this March, we held one of the first community vaccination clinics. We were able to secure 200 shots for people most vulnerable in our community. Almost without notice, we launched the Homeboy Youth Reentry Center on First Street to provide a wide range of service to at-risk and TAE youth. The second full year of the Homeboy Art Academy transitioned to virtual programming for youth and to provide art healing circles in juvenile halls and detention camps. An innovative part of this program is Music Heals, inspired and supported by Mike and Corky Stoller. This is also a busy year for advocacy. With so many pressing local and national issues brought forth, we used our 30 plus years of experience to ensure the homeboy voice was heard and impactful. 
let me mention just two of these efforts. We are now part of the conversation of LA County's plans and effort to reimagine alternatives to incarceration. And the passing of Measure J, which represents a seismic shift in the mindset of LA County's approach to helping those who are just as involved, is a first for our county and much needed for our community. Our advocacy for quality jobs has led us quietly to launch Homeboy Ventures and Jobs Fund, where we plan to raise homeboy capital to be used to invest in our current businesses, such as homeboy recycling, or to start up more businesses like Feed Hope. To date, we have raised more than $8 million and look to raise a total of $15 million. As many of you know, in 2020, we also were the recipients of the Conrad N. Hilton Humanitarian Award. This is the largest, and most prestigious award given nonprofits worldwide. We're obviously extremely pleased to have received this recognition, and I want to thank all of you who have championed Homeboy over the years. You have been our steadfast supporters. You believed in Homeboy when others said we were not a good bet. You knew the demonized and forgotten need to be invested in. Thanks to your patronage in those lean years, we are now a much more substantial organization, and the good folks at Hilton have recognized that. All I've said so far represents the ying, the joyous, the one hand. But on the other hand, we are not joyous at all. Our team looks back at 2020 as the most difficult year ever for the population we serve. The increase in hunger, homelessness, violence, and addiction brought on by the pandemic is simply heartbreaking. In these last 12 months, we've lost nearly two dozen men and women who were a part of a homeboy community. Not one death from COVID per se, but absolutely COVID related. Father Greg was recently quoted in Los Angeles Times talking about how there is, now more than ever, a pervading sense of hopelessness. And without hope, there is nothing. No desire to carry on, no future, no life. Our team understands this equation. Our team understands that death seems to always be lurking right around the corner. And that is why we are so tirelessly work to keep home by open and to keep hope alive. For me, in all these men and women we lost, there's a common theme. It was at Homeboy that they found their best selves, that they discovered they belonged, that they reached out to others, that God shined through them. We saw their human essence, their goodness, their love, their joy. So for Sammy, Eric, Brandy, Alvin, Nick, and all the others. We saw you, and you have made our lives richer, brought our lives more meaning. Any one of us would be proud to call you son or daughter. As the senior team and the board look towards the future, 2020 has taught us that what we do not only matters, it is needed now more than ever. How we stand with the demonized is authentic and valued. Investing in the population in terms of job creation and work readiness creates economic justice. Allowing people to heal from their trauma is at the heart of alternatives to incarceration. We see 2021 as a reawakening of our society to the work we do. And that work is just, needed, and holy. Thank you for standing by us as we march on. Good evening. I'm Joanna Carbohan, and I'm currently a student at UCLA studying history and political science. I'm a mom to Chanel, my four-year-old daughter, and I work at Homeboy Industries. Homeboy is a place I've been coming to since I was 15 years old. And while I might have not been ready for it all then, when I think of Homeboy now, it is my family. There are so many people who have impacted my life who are at Homeboy. Tom, Shirley, Brittany, Connie, Steve Avalos. All those who work on the second floor, I always know they got me. At Homeboy, I started moving up. I had different experiences going out and speaking in public with Father G, applying for college, working in the mental health department, working with Tom Vozo. This helped me open up more. I interact with people who weren't just from my neighborhood. Some of these experiences made me so nervous, but I embraced it. 
I learned discipline. I started to trust my instinct to communicate better, to advocate for myself and my daughter. I learned not to be ashamed. Sometimes my tattoos created a barrier. People would often discriminate against me. That was hard, but I now have the tools to use and people to talk about it with. I see the bigger picture now, and I recognize just how far I've come. Now that I have secure housing for me and Chanel, I have much less stress and struggle. I actually have two homes, the one I've created for my daughter and I, and my home at Homeboy with my Homeboy family. Tonight, I have the great honor of introducing our homegirl and homeboy heroes of the year, Kendra Brown and Santiago Sanchez. The awards are given to trainees who graduated from our programs and become inspiring mentors to others. They are more than shining examples. They are with the very definition of what happens when someone chooses to do the hard work to change and embark upon the slow, intentional pursuit of healing. They are hope in the flesh. They give back, paying forward the ideas of radical kinship and inclusion in their work and on behalf of their community. They are proud to be proof of the special place Homeboy is. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kendra Brown, a former trainee of Homeboy Industries. I would first like to say thank you to my higher power for his grace and mercy. Thank you to Homeboy Industries for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself and their guidance and support. Um, I would also like to thank my sister and my children for their support and love. Um, and I am so honored to be receiving this award because homeboys was there with me every step of the way to see my growth. When I fell, they helped pick me back up. And um, I'm very, very grateful for homeboy industry's resilience. Because of them, um, I started to believe in myself and now able to, you know, go out on a limb and go out and step out on faith. And uh, I'm eventually gonna start my own organization for traffic women and children. Again, I'm honored to be receiving this award, and I'm very grateful and appreciative. And again, thank you, Homeboy Industries, and everyone out there. Good evening. I am honored to receive the Homeboy Hero Award regardless of I think this decision was made after too many drinks during happy hour. The truth is, Jose Arellano taught me to trust and believe that we are worthy in order for God to continue to bless us. Since that great lesson, many more amazing things have been taking place in my life. Like being here today, receiving this award in front of all you real heroes. My journey with Homeboy Industry started Back in October of 1999, when I approached Father Greg in front of the chapel at Central Juvenile Hall, I said, gee, I've been calling your office for two weeks, and I prayed that I would see you here today. I told him, I might be losing my job tomorrow, and I've been praying that God opens new doors for me. I believe that my calling is to work with the same youth and adults you work with. I was hoping you had a place for me. After sharing with him that I survived the gang and criminal lifestyle, drug addiction, alcoholism, I had a valid driver's license, clean adult record, and a body van to take people to church for prayer group. All G said was, you have a driver's license and a van, my son? Two weeks later, I became part of the homeboy family. I was 22 years old and just wanted to be of service, helping make a difference. I was asked recently how Homeboy has helped me grow as a person. I think as Homeboy grew, so did I. In those days, G would say, handle it, Santi, and I did. More than anything, no matter what my role was, mentoring has always been a huge part of what I've done at Homeboy. Community-based organizations like Homeboy has always needed community support and funding. It's been amazing all these years to see all the financial support, all the donors who believe in our organization and its work. 
I decided in 2007 to embark on my real estate career full time. I am always looking for ways to get others to know about Homeboy and donate. Over four years ago, we started our Homeboy Fitness program. Through health and fitness, the homeboys and homegirls have been able to overcome self-doubt, find peace of mind, feel better, live better, and make a change of lifestyle for their own good as well as for their own families. They believe in themselves and they are now helping others do the same. At Homeboy, we learned that God didn't put us here alone on our journey. When we embrace kinship, unconditional love, and self-worth, regardless of what we've been through, it is so powerful. Thank you for all that you do for Homeboy and your support. That help keeps our doors open and makes this work possible. Enjoy the rest of your night. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it for our homeboy and homegirl heroes of the year. Yay! Hold on. Before we get to that, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo? Why? No, Lily, it's, it's May 1st. Saturday, May 1st. May Day. May Day? The ancient festival of spring? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then then yeah. where's my little basket full of flowers and treats, the maypole with the fluttering, colorful ribbons? Where's the singing and dancing and cake? <laughs> oh, God. We're leaving all that to other people. The significance of May Day tonight is more in line with the other meaning of the term. You know, May Day? which comes from the French mede, which means help me. I flunked French in high school. Um, well, I'm fluent in French, so well, take it off. from me. Big show off. <laughs> well, just trust me, okay? <laughs> May Day is the international distress signal used in a life-threatening emergency, usually on a ship or a plane, but it can be used in a variety of situations, and it absolutely applies tonight. Most of Homeboy's trainees are in life-threatening situations prior to seeking help. But tonight it's Homeboy that needs your help. So remember out there, whether you speak English or French or Spanish, oh, French like <laughs> Madame Fonda, every gift counts. And every dollar will be matched by the Johnny Carson Foundation up to $200,000. So don't be shy. Like it says on your screen, text LOMAX to 76278 to get a link to give on your cell phone now. Or email your pledge to Lomax at homeboyindustries.org along with your name, email, and phone number. And we'll follow up with you. All roads lead to Rome. That's for you Italian speakers out there. <laughs> We'd like to mention just a few of the people and organizations who are our biggest sponsors of the evening. Again, the Johnny Carson Foundation, the Rosenthal Family Foundation, and Kennedy Wilson. Thank you all for making such tremendous investments in hope. For those of you watching at home, if you haven't yet made a donation, please do. Your gifts enable Homeboy to continue to nourish the most vulnerable among us with home-delivered meals, and it endows the Transition Support Fund, which helps trainees overcome those curveballs life throws at them. All those little pop-up expenses that can derail someone on the road to re-entry. Emergency housing, supplies for a newborn, a new dress for a big job interview. Again, it's investing in people. It's what Homeboy does extremely well, I might add. And for those of you who are moved and able to donate twenty-five dollars or $50,000, your investment will support a trainee in our nationally recognized re-entry and job training program. When you give at this level, you will be personally hearing from the trainee directly impacted. Again, congratulations to Kendra Brown and Santiago Sanchez, our homegirl and homeboy heroes of the year. We've got the Kinship and Community Awards coming right up, so please stay with us. Jane and I aren't going anywhere. Um, my ankles are tied together, actually. <laughs> 
We'll see you back here soon. But now please welcome Homeboy Work Readiness Coordinator, Eugene Walker. Thank you, Jane and Lily. I am pleased to be with you this evening and grateful you are here with us in our Homeboy community, which to me is home. After 30 years of incarceration and 13 parole board hearings, I was released from prison in 2011. I was arrested and in Men's Central Jail, I remember my first visit with my mom. <laughs> On that day, 40 years ago, she leaned in to a glass separating us and said assuredly, I love you, baby, we'll get through this. And she paused for a second and she said it again, I love you, baby, we'll get through this. She was my beacon and my first mentor. I had faith that even in serving a life sentence, I'd managed to hold out hope, which oftentimes fluttered like a candle in the wind. After 12 parole board hearings with denials, it certainly felt impossible. However, I still had to stand up and lean into hope. Many people in my life helped me facilitate hope and gave me the resolve to soldier on. They made me feel I was never forgotten. They were the beacons of encouragement as I walked by faith, not by sight. One of my mentors while I was in prison was a man named Jimmy Valenzuela, who introduced me to Father Greg. He shared with me the stories of his own connections to G and Homeboy Industries. After my 13th and final parole board hearing, I was told I would be going home. When I first walked into the doors at Homeboy Industries, I was Eugene. I was a person. I wasn't just a black guy. I wasn't just a gang member. I was an individual who was seen and heard. I was restored more and more. I have learned and what has been reinforced at Homeboy is this idea of how to pay it forward. I have learned to do this from all the beacons and mentors in my life who have shown me the importance of relationships and connection. Now I use my voice as a coach, as a mentor, and as an advocate. It is often a slow road to healing. I learned this from Father Greg. G reminds us of our commitment to this slow, important work. This is the work of the healing at Homeboy, to pay attention, to listen, to watch, to guide, to love, and to choose to be a beacon for each other. Now it is my honor to introduce to you our Homeboy Kinship Award winner, Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard. Kinship, the building of mutual relationships is our secret sauce at Homeboy. We are guided by the power of human connection and by seeing the world through another person's eyes. Let's take a moment together to learn more about the Congresswoman and her connection to Homeboy Industries and Father Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene, for your kind words and for being an inspirational mentor to those on their journey of healing and transformation. There are no words to truly express how much this award means to me. Born and reared in Boyle Heights, I've known of Father Boyle's inspiring work since he was at Dolores Mission and as founder of Homeboy Industries. My personal example of his incredible work is that of a young man who won my first congressional art competition. While visiting Washington, D.C., his mother told me that she was terrified her son would be killed by a rival gang. Due to Father Greg's intervention, Fabian, who will always hold a special place in my heart, is today a talented artist and executive director of the Homeboy Art Academy. As we are faced with fear, hate, and the dehumanization of people, I wish we could clone hundreds of Father Greg's with his belief that every individual has goodness, value, and the right to a second chance in life. My most sincere thanks to the Board of Directors for tonight's honor and to Father Boyle for whom I have the greatest respect and admiration. Receiving an award from the amazing organization he founded is truly humbling and something I will always cherish. Good evening, I'm Steve Avalos, 
The Honorable Judge Peter Espinoza is an amazing man. It is not just his dedication and commitment to our community. It is also his compassionate lens and his willingness to take action. My family is one of many, and I mean many lives, that Judge Peter Espinoza has touched. Over a year ago, I had the opportunity to meet Judge Espinoza. There were around 10 of us together in a meeting room, standing around talking. I asked him, is your name Judge Peter Espinoza? And he said, yes, it is. My heart started pounding. With, with deep gratitude, I said, Judge Espinoza, I believe you let out my father. He asked me, what's your father's name? I told him, Richard, Richard Mexico. Judge Espinoza smiled and said, yes, I did. To give you context, my father was originally on death row, but the death penalty was ruled unconstitutional in the 70s. So everyone on death row ended up with life in prison. When my father was dying of cancer, they didn't want to release him. They still saw him as a man on death row. Judge Espinosa saw my father as a man he had become, a man who had changed his life after 35 years in prison. And because of this, my father was granted compassionate release. He was released from prison at 10 in the morning, and he died sitting on the couch with my mother at 10 o'clock that night. That was over 11 years ago, and Judge Espinosa still remembered everything. As we were talking, Judge Espinosa asked me, by the way, how is your brother doing? I said, my brothers? Doing good. As I began to speak about my brothers, Judge Espinosa said, no, not that brother. Your brother who had life in prison. I believe he was your father, Sally. And my heart dropped. I said, Judge Espinosa, that's me. I was my father, Sally. I had life in prison. I'm now one of the directors at Homeboy. He looked at me as I looked at him and we embraced. Community, compassion, commitment, dedication, and all the above. That's who this man is. Please, let us please honor the Honorable Judge Peter Espinoza. I'd like to thank Father Greg and the Board of Directors for honoring me with this award. I would also like to thank my wife, Diana, for her patience, love, and support on the long journey from when we met as teenagers to what is now our golden years. It is very unlikely that I would have graduated from high school, let alone gone to college and law school, had we not met. It has been one of the great experiences of my life to get to know Father Greg and watch his humanity and compassion transformed the lives of so many young people. He has demonstrated to the criminal justice system that there is a different way to think about young men and women who find their way into our courtrooms, jails, and prisons. Thank you for having dedicated your life to this work. Y un abrazo. Thanks again to Homeboy's very own Eugene Walker and Steve Avalos for their inspiring stories. And congratulations to Kinship Award recipient Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard and retired Judge Peter Espinoza, respectively, on their well-deserved Kinship and Community Awards. If their connections to Father G and Homeboy don't move you, I don't know what will. The Congresswoman and Judge are examples of all that is good in the world and the differences they've made in the lives of all homeboys and homegirls is beyond measure. Now, as many of you fans of Homeboy know, last year the organization received the 2020 Conrad N. Hilton Humanitarian Prize the world's largest such honor bestowed upon a nonprofit deemed to have made extraordinary contributions toward alleviating human suffering. Homeboy is among the very few human services organizations in the U.S. to have received this distinction, which shows that the mission Father G began more than three decades ago has become a true leader, inspiring change around the globe. Let's take a look at what some past Hilton Humanitarian Prize recipients and other luminaries have to say about Homeboy. Our prize recipient this year is providing hope and opportunity to so many 
who may not have otherwise succeeded. We have seen firsthand the consequences of violence and gang violence, and we know very well how essential your work is. We are proud to have you as a family of change makers for all the change that you're making for those people who are left behind. At Tostan, we share the deep commitment to human dignity. And as we say here in Wolof, chika nam chika rek, onwards and upwards, always. Congratulations. We know what it means to help disadvantaged and underappreciated members of our society. And we join with you in celebrating their success and yours. Operation Smile welcomes Father Boyle and Homeboy Industries to the Hilton family. Thank you for your compassion and love for so many people. You have changed so many lives. Father Greg and Tom, I'm so moved by how you bring dignity to transform the lives of gang members. And I welcome you into the Hilton Prize Lorette family. In this year of exacerbated division and inequities, your work to build hope in stronger communities around the world really resonates. Your groundbreaking humanitarian work with people who have been systematically marginalized is particularly inspiring in this time of division. I was perusing your website and I noticed that you focused on hope and I think all of the laureates focus very much on this amazing and powerful human emotion of creating hope to change lives in a positive and, and constructive way. Together we work to help traumatize people, overcome the trauma, understand it's part of who they are, but also to get back to a life where they're productive members of society. Welcome, we look forward to working with you. Receiving the Hilton Prize is a beautiful testimony to all your years of service an outstanding humanitarian work. Congratulations to Homeboy Industries on this richly deserved award. We stand alongside you in support of your mission. You show everyone the possibilities of hope, of reconciliation, and the triumph of love. And for that, for the hope that you give us all, for the love you give all, we thank you for inspiring us and showing us a path forward. Bless you and thank you for your work. As a board member, I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank the Conrad N. Hilton Foundation and the Humanitarian Prize jurors for recognizing Homeboy Industries in such a grand way. All of us in the Homeboy family appreciate your support more than you can know. We also want to express to every donor tonight how grateful we are. Your contributions are what make our good work possible. If you haven't made a donation yet this evening, you can do so in two ways. Text LOMAX to 76278. We can't impress upon you enough that every donation, no matter how big or small, matters. 100% participation tonight is imperative. And for you high rollers out there who just can't resist making a pledge for tens of thousands of dollars, and we know there are a bunch of you, please email Lomax at homeboyindustries.org with your name, email, and phone number and we will be in touch. That's how you get a gold star. Now, we know that many of you have been waiting for Father G, and he's almost here. To introduce him, please welcome Homeboy's very own Van Huynh. Thank you, Jane and Lily, for that introduction. What an honor it is to be here. I was asked if I could wear a tie, and I can't help but reflect on the time I was asked to dress up and wear a tie when I was a teenager. It was for court. I received my sentence from the judge. I was already so drained and tired of the year and a half fighting my case in juvenile hall. The judge, prosecutor, and it seemed like the whole state of California were against me, even my own attorneys. That was 1995. I was 18 years old. I went to prison and with a life sentence. During the years that I was incarcerated, all I wanted was to have a cell with a good window and a mirror, ones that weren't painted over or scratched up. I wanted these two things so that I could see the world through the window and myself in the mirror. 
I look back now and know that all I wanted was confirmation of my existence in this world. In 2019, I was released through Senate Bill 260, which mandated Board of Parole hearings for youth offenders. I came to Homeboy Industries, where I saw huge, giant, clean windows with spectacular views, views of the world that had silently left me behind, and plenty of mirrors. But I actually saw myself in all the beautiful people here. I'm certain that I didn't really know what I was looking for. I just wanted to be good. Father G whispered to me one day, he said, Van, you are great. You are perfect the way you are. I had never in my life been told these things before. I've been called a chink, a gook, an animal that deserves the death penalty. I have been told to get the F out of this country, and I have been ordered deported to be sent the F out of this country. Well, the homeboy family says I'm perfect, so who is right? Perhaps everyone is, because what we see in others is a reflection of who we are and where we're at in our journey of healing and growth and change. This all comes with hard work, of course. Today at Homeboy, I'm an associate of government relations and a part of the local organizing committee with Fabian Garcia, helping to empower our vulnerable community members to vote and providing them with information and supplies to keep them safe through the pandemic. It's been such a privilege working with and learning from him, from so many amazing people here, too many to name. So without further ado, with a huge amount of admiration and love, it is a great honor to present the man who had the courage and conviction to persist and who made all of this possible. He is a humble vessel of endless compassion, Father Greg Boyle. I love you, Pops. Thank you all for being here this evening. A special thanks to Jane and Lily for graciously hosting. We are all grateful as well to Lucille, Peter, Kendra, and Santi for allowing themselves to be honored tonight. Thanks to all the Homeboy staff, too numerous to mention, for pulling this event off. And I have a heart full of gratitude to Tom Volso for his vision and clear leadership. So this happened to me last week. Leo was on his break from the bakery and he's standing in front of my desk, hairnet, mask, his apron is dusted with flour. And during the pandemic, I helped to have his teeth fixed. So he drops by to thank me and he says, AG, can I take off my mask and show you my grill? I said, sure. And he reveals, you know, this big old Colgate smile, teeth aligned and white and he exaggerates the smile to put his dental work on full display. And then he says, not only did you pay for this smile, you are the reason I'm smiling. And before I can say anything, he says, hey, that's good. Write it down. And, and I do. And he even redictates it to me. Not only did you pay, and we laugh as the homies say, from the stomach, I expected uh, he just wanted to be in my next book, Mission Accomplished. So during this past pandemic year of virtual everything, I've done more Zoom book clubs than you could shake a club at. I had one, a Catholic men's group who had kindly read Tattoos on the Heart. Every member of the group had 20 years on me. They're all in their 80s and their 90s. And most of our time together was spent yelling things like, Harry, unmute yourself, as we all watched Harry go on and on, and we didn't hear a word of it. Unmute yourself has become the battle cry of our 2020 vision and existence. A homie out of the blue wrote me an email asking, why would Jesus heal the man mute from birth? and then say, don't say anything? Good question. Not speaking is untenable. We all choose to prophetically unmute ourselves. We know that what goes unexamined and unspoken can never be upended. Still, the homeboy way is less about getting to solutions and more about getting to each other which of course is the solution. Our 2020 vision has prodded us to see old wrongs in our social contract 
and we feel newly emboldened to reverse them. We imagine a social contract that benefits everybody, and then we work together to realize it. The truth of this is not something we bring into the world, it, it brings us. All the while, we choose love as the architecture of our hearts. We choose to cherish with every breath. And like Leo, we find a reason to smile, to laugh from the stomach, and stand as an open invitation to all to do the same. Unmuting is not a denouncing, but an announcing. Homeboy invites everyone to nurture into being a community of kinship and beloved belonging. I met Charlie at 16 years old, and I asked him, Hey, what do your homies call you? Jehovah's Witness, he said firmly. I asked him why that might be. Because I always be going to the homies' houses early in the morning, knocking on their doors. What gave him an early rise was a household full of terror and heartache. What Somali poet Warsan Shire says about refugees could be said of Charlie. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark, unless home chased you, fire under feet. Once I got to know Charlie, he confided to me, I'm just waiting to die or get locked up. One day, we'll stop punishing wound and seek to heal it. I always tell homies when they begin with us, just imagine that we are a big old net ready to catch you if you fall. We often use the notion here at Homeboy of being held, reflective, I think, of the God who will not drop us. A homegirl told me once, that homeboy welcomed me like you guys were waiting for me. When I walked through those doors, she said, I didn't have a heart. I had a rock. I wanted to cover my pain instead of feel it. Now I can feel my pain. And it's a beautiful thing. Tenderness is the scaffolding of this place. And therapeutic mysticism is our cultural competence. When we are whole, that's what we see in others. It is the piety of the open eye. Judgment is the partial view. The world will focus on outcomes or behavior or success. Mysticism glances just above what the world has in its sights we choose to live in each other's hearts. Erica, a homegirl who does intake at Homeboy, had her 18-year-old daughter visit her last week for three days. Erica hadn't seen her in 10 years. Erica went to prison and her daughter was adopted out. Erica brought her to Homeboy and proudly introduced her to me. She will begin college in the fall. Erica told me later that she was driving her daughter to Homeboy and her daughter kept staring at her mom. And then she told Erica, you are like a ray of sunshine. I can see that you are happy. You wake up happy. You go to sleep happy. I love who you are today. Erica told me this quite tearful and full of joy. She said, God sprinkled some kind of magic dust on me here at Homeboy. As Jesus says, my joy yours, your joy complete. I wrote a story many years ago in Tattoos on the Heart about a homie named Moreno who worked here for many years. He uh, came from a hard life in a difficult family situation, fire under feet. And finally, he was detained and in probation camps, and he went to a suitable placement in Orange County, and we were talking. He had been back in school for the first time in many years. 
And I asked how he liked school, and he said he didn't like it that much. And I said, well, come on, you must have a subject you like. How about English? Hate it. How about history? Can't stand it. How about math? Boring. I was like, come on, there must be something you like. How, do you have a science? Oh, damn, gee, biology, that's the bomb right there. Watch, I'll check this out. On Monday, we're going to digest a frog. And I laughed and I, I said, well, Miko, actually it's dissect a frog. He goes, whatever, Monday we're fucking with a frog. A couple years after that, his brother died in his arms. And then he had to pretend he was dead because the shooters came back to make sure they both were. After the funeral, he came back to the office and some of his homies said to him, don't worry, we'll take care of everything. And he snapped at them. He said, no, God will. I called him into my office and we talked and he said, death is a punk. And then I quoted him a few years later as I stood at the morning meeting the day after he had been killed. He was playing a pickup football game in the street with some kids. Death is a punk, I told him. It's not different from St. Paul saying that death could not hold Jesus or death has no power or death wears your sting. Death is a punk. But in his time with us, Moreno knew the truth of who he was. He knew joy. He knew that he was exactly what God had in mind when God made him. He laughed from the stomach and he transformed his pain so he didn't have to transmit it anymore. And even death is afraid of that. Miguel Lugo, who does community outreach, stood in front of a gym packed with minors detained at Orange County Juvenile Hall. He told them, you have the whole world in your hands, but you just don't know how to hold it. The same could be said for all of us. We help remind each other how the heart opens. We remind each other that we all have the same last name so we can drop the burden of our judgments. Fire under feet. A homie told me once, I love being reminded. And we all do. So let us unlock eternity for each other. That's the whole world and how we hold it. Our own unmuted, awakened sense of lovability within us moves us out to the other. We rest in the abundant acceptance we feel, and it propels us forward. Jesus always thought that the root cause of oppression was our lack of compassion. We receive this tender glance from God, then we become this tender glance in the world, compassionate and fluent in therapeutic mysticism. We all belong to each other. We begin there. So what do we do now? We unmute ourselves. We laugh from the stomach. And like a big old net, we hold the world as tenderly as we can. Thank you all very much, and God bless you. Wow. I've always told our visitors people cry when they hear Father G speak because his words are so beautiful and powerful. We cry because we listen with our hearts, and our hearts are filled with hope. Tonight, I hope all of you listening are inspired to give. And that, as we say in Hollywood, is a hard wrap on Homeboy's 2021 La Maximo Awards. 
thank you to all our special guests, our sponsors, and our honorees. But most importantly, thank you, not only for tuning in, but for opening your hearts and wallets and generously giving whatever amount you could. And if you still haven't made your gift tonight, it's not too late. Those of you seated in a sponsored virtual room may proceed to the donor room to give in person. Lily and I are so grateful to have been able to be with you all this evening, and we hope the many stories you've heard tonight have inspired you. They are proof positive that Homeboy Industries is a vital part of the Los Angeles community and an exemplar of nonprofits in Southern California, the rest of the country, and around the world. Yeah, that's right, that's right. We have right here the tried and proven embodiment of what an alternative to incarceration looks like. No need to reinvent the wheel. And of course, sticking with our evening long theme of hope, we sincerely hope to see you next year for the 2022 Low Maximo Awards live and in person in a ballroom near you. So stay oh. safe, lead with love and good, good night. night.